there is a day-to-day -day presence of the British Army, which people object to. Uh, the level of repression varies from area to area and is greatest in the Catholic city ghettos. Uh, but the, the major problem, you see, is that you can't get out of the violent situation by wishful thinking and praying, not that I disregard anyone's belief in prayer, but you, you can only get out of it by understanding how you got into it. And we got into it through a process of history and political developments, and there is a political way out of it. Now, the, the problem on the ground is that uh, where you're working with people who, particularly in the Catholic ghettos, have unemployment levels as high as 40%, uh, they are not armed with a rational understanding of why they are poor, why they are oppressed, why they get put in prison, why they get the brunt of British Army repression every day. Uh, and they're not rationally armed with the means to politically organize to overcome that. And therefore they, which is a perfectly natural thing to them, they fight against it with the weapons that they were taught to fight against it with. What forms does this repression take? Is it, is it an immediate and a physical kind of thing? Yes, it is a very physical thing in as much as now, I personally live in an area which has, is very rural, very isolated, has very little trouble. But I, as a private citizen, have no right to prevent the British Army driving regularly up to my front door and demanding that they see around the property on which I live, that they open all my outhouse doors, that they ask me where I've been. You know, if I go shopping, I can be stopped on the street by a British Army patrol. And, and ridiculous things. They want to know what age my children are, what school they go to. Uh, now, it's, that's a minimum level which people suffer. Then you have in the areas of greatest friction, uh, a position where because of the situation, as soon as children, it's not that they are beaten out by the IRA, it's because they see the army as the people who during internment took their fathers away. When they see the army coming into a Catholic ghetto on patrol, they run out and they throw stones. This the army gather them up, they take them into prison, mothers have to go and, and bail them out, and this is small children. That's another thought that's crossed a lot of people's minds, in, in this region at least, that in this environment the children growing up are growing steadfast in this kind of hate. Yeah. Is it, is it <coughs> true? Uh, I wouldn't be sufficiently qualified to say what the psychological, emotional, long-term effects of the present situation are, but I find it, you know, I take issue with people who who say, uh, we can't have this conflict because look what it's doing to our children. But we can have 40% unemployment. Uh, you know, they don't care what that does to our children. Uh, we have fathers who, who have never worked, who have never seen young fathers, who have never seen their fathers work, and who do not believe they'll ever see their children work. We don't say, what does that do to a child, to be brought up in an environment that in his own family circle, he doesn't know what it's like to, to earn a living.